Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again for clicking on this video. On the table with us, we have this beautiful lab. Her name is Giada. We may have filmed her in the past, I'm not too sure, uh, but she is shedding excessively. Um, this time of year, in the spring and in the fall months, dogs will do their worst shedding. So she's really shedding, her skin is really dry, um, we're going to be doing a de-shedding. All dogs are different, and we say that a lot in our videos. Some labs tend to have like this double coat going. I just did a, 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 a red lab the other day, and his coat was so flat, he was barely shedding. And then on the other hand, you have these almost like double coated labs with really thick coats like Giada here. And uh, the process is totally different because you really got to get all this stuff out. We're going to be using a rake as we have done in the past. And we're going to be using a slicker brush and maybe a little bit of a comb. But tools like a shedding blade and even like your Furminator, they, they would work, but they're not gonna get that undercoat out as well as a rake. That, that's just my belief and that's been my experience. So when you have like these thicker coats, um, you even if they're labs and short-coated dogs, you really have to get that undercoat out first. You might wanna finish them with a shedding blade or a, or a you know, the uh, Furminator, but like I said, initially, you really want to get this undercoat kind of out and uh, aerated. It's kind of like aerating your lawn in the spring. And by doing this, we always mention when we get them in the tub, we're really going to be able to work that shampoo down into the skin. If all of this stuff is just covering up the skin, you know, that shampoo is just going to do like a surface clean. You might clean, you know, the outer part of her coat here, the top coat, but you're not going to really work that shampoo into the skin where it really needs to go. Um, another thing, if you are doing this at home and you're using a, ra a tool like this rake here, you want to be very, very careful. Inspect your dog. We know Giada. We work on her all the time. So she does have a little lump down in here. Uh, but inspect your dog, especially in the chest area. You don't want to, uh, you know, hurt her or, or grab any, like, growths that might be around. If you hit a growth with this rake, it's surely going to bleed. It's going to tear the growth open. So if you're using a rake like this, always make sure that you inspect your dog thoroughly for any kinds of growths or, you know, maybe some abrasion or cuts or anything. Sometimes if, if the skin is a little... I mean, if the coat's a little thinner in some areas, you don't want to hit the rake real hard there. So you really want to just be careful with the tool like this. So I'm doing short strokes here. I'm not doing just one straight stroke like that because by doing short strokes, you're getting more undercoat out as opposed to just going like this. And, and then, you know, there's a lot of pulling. So it's even more comfortable for the dog to do these little short strokes like this. You're going to get a lot of thickness right here in the hip area and even even down the back legs. I mean you can just see how much hair is coming off of her. You see and like I said the rake is going to be your best friend in this with these uh, thicker coated labs. And you'd be doing the same process, say, on a golden retriever. Um, you know, any double-coated dog, really, a collie, a sheltie. I use this rake all the time. It's one of my favorite tools. If you don't have one and you have a dog like this, get one, because it's great on your hand. It's so much less taxing than, say, you know, using a comb, because, you know, the comb is a lot more taxing on your wrist. Although, you know, I might finish her up with the comb later. This rake with this big handle just allows you to, you know, grip it. And, and it's a lot easier on your hands and your wrist. But again, like just be very, very careful under here. You know, you want to be careful with the nipples. You want to be careful with this, you know, this loose skin on the bottom. You don't want to grab that skin with the rake and pull. So I'm, I'm always 
being very, very cautious and aware of where I'm, I'm placing that rake, okay? You don't want this skin to get trapped in between the teeth of the rake and you pull, you will cut her, you'll, you know, you'll tear them open. So like any tool, you just wanna be very, very careful. When it, when it comes to dog grooming, uh, you know, safety first. We're always trying to be safe. We don't wanna hurt the dogs. Own, owners trust us as groomers to, you know, be careful with their dogs. And, and, it, and it happens anyway, it, it still can happen, but believe me, the chances of it happening are a lot less. Now use the rake and contour. So you see how this is just indented here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of contouring in those areas as opposed to coming in the wrong direction. This would be the wrong direction. This would be the wrong direction. So in those tight spots, you just really want to contour your tools. And you'll get used to doing this too. It's something that if you do often, you will get practiced and you'll get better and better. And uh, you, know, you could do this once a week if you have a, a a high shedder, a dog that sheds a lot. You can do this once a week. And the bigger part of this too is gonna be in the tub later because we're gonna use that forced air dryer on Giada and that forced air dryer is gonna get even more undercoat out. Right, Gigi? I'm sorry, baby. I know, you're gonna feel so much better though. You're gonna feel so much better. You're such a good girl. I love you, Gigi. Okay, so we're working our way up into her neck area and her chest area. Uh, like I mentioned before, you wanna be really, really careful with the skin when using a rake. You got some loose skin right here in the neck area, guys. Don't come down hard over there. You know, you're really finessing this stuff. You know, some areas you can go harder if it's here on, on, the, on the back, but here you're finessing and going very, very lightly, kind of, you know, you can spread the skin like this with your other hand. We're being really, really careful all the time. Gigi. Good girl, mama. We're very, very busy today. It's, uh, it's Good Friday here, so we have just a lot of people coming in for the holiday. So we're trying to get this video out because, like I said, we're just compelled to show you guys everything we possibly can. We really want to teach you guys because we know that dogs are shedding a lot, and this is the way you're going to uh, fix that problem and get that skin healthy too because you know, if you don't do this and you just let it go, you know, you'll end up with some skin problems, dry skin, flaky skin, and you don't wanna do that. You really wanna do this, you have to do this for the dog's health and benefit. Good girl, mama. It's okay, Gigi. And Gigi's, Gigi's a little older too, so you know, she doesn't have a whole lot of table time, meaning, you know, we can't keep her on the table for all that long. We really do have to kind of get the process going. Here's another tough spot. Be very, very careful with the ears. You don't want to get this rake in between the, that, that ear flap or anything like that. But she's all raked out. I, I mean, that's just about it right there initially. But we're going to go over again. We're going to get her in the tub, give her a really good bath, and we're going to show you what that forced air dryer does too. So keep watching so you can see her finished look. This de-shedding was a combination of things. 
After thoroughly raking out the undercoat before the bath, we went ahead and gave her a good wet down and scrubbing in the tub, removing and washing away even more dead hair. After a good rinsing, we then force air dried her in the tub by using a high velocity force air dryer. We were able to blow out all of the remaining undercoat that was left. We then went over her with a slicker brush. We sprayed her down with Shoshin finishing spray and she feels like a new puppy again. Her skin was able to breathe again and her bath cleaned and revitalized the shine back into her coat. This time of year is a big shedding season for dogs like Giada. By keeping up with this process and doing this at home, you can really limit a lot of shedding. A big thanks to Giada for helping us out with this video, and a big thanks to you guys for watching it, and we will see you in the next one.